Today I'm joined by Tigrilla Sola from uh, Damina in Italy. She works on the Music of the Plants project and um, she has a background in sound engineering and has joined the research team at Damina to, um, on the, the Music of the Plants. Um, which she's going to uh, elucidate on shortly. And um, the Music of the Plants uh, project um, was started a long time ago, back in the 70s, where a device is created to um, measure the uh, electrical impulses of plants and turn them into music. And this has led the researchers to be able to communicate with the plants and has led to some other fascinating discoveries. So, to Grillo, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. So, um, can you give us an overview about the music of the plants in a bit more detail and um, tell us about your latest research? Yeah, most definitely. So the music of the plants, like you said, started in about the 70s, um, late 70s, and most people will remember the book uh, The Secret Lives of Plants, where uh, this Cleve Baxter, who used to work for the CIA, kind of discovered this connection between the plants and the ability for them to communicate. Um, so fast forward a few years and Dom and Her, which is a community in northern Italy, is born. And one of the things that's really important for us is this connection to nature. And this connection um, not just in a having nature around us or in a mental sort of way, but really in the sense of connecting with nature and connecting with trees and plants. And there was a group of people here that were kind of liked electronics and another group that really loved nature. And so they started to get together and thought about, well, what would a plant be able to do if it was given other apparatuses? In other words, if it was given the ability to communicate in another way, how would that work? What would happen? And it started with some simple experiments, the idea of things like turning on a light bulb or, you know, what about if you give it a little cart? And so it quickly then progressed through all these different stages of experiments. And one of them was the idea of connecting it through to a machine that allowed it to create tones. Um, over the years, those tones, which kind of started as an oscilloscope and just the waves, when we realized that the plant would create these tones, but after a while, it seemed to have been controlling the tones in the sense that it wasn't just random tones that it was putting forth, but that there was some kind of rhythm to it in a sense. And this led them to think, well, wait a minute, what if we start to map these tones to a musical scale? What would the plant do then? Would it learn like a musician? And over time, we've developed what we now call the music of the plants, which is really a device that allows a plant to become a musician. Think of the device as an instrument, and the plant itself is the musician. And just like any musician, the first time you hook them up, they make horrible noises. You know, they not horrible, but they start to play random notes. Just like a you give a child a violin, and what comes out of it is some sort of music, but it's random. But what's interesting is that we've we've um, seen time and time again that the plants literally learn, and they learn from each other. They learn from other human musicians. And so they have the ability to start creating melody, they have the ability to start creating rhythm, and they literally start to create a harmony with other musicians around them, whether they be plant musicians or human musicians. And so for us, this is a fascinating area of research where we're literally creating a new form of contact, um, music being something that's so accessible to all of us, something that we all enjoy um, and therefore we're not really giving, we're giving a voice to the plants without giving them, amplifying them. We're not really making them become us. Instead, we're allowing them to have an avenue to express themselves. And depending on your experience, this leads you to be able to have a different level of contact with the plants. Because when you have an experienced plant musician at home, uh, at, they start to also react not just to the natural environment around them, um, not just to other musicians or like music, but they also react to just day-to-day -day stimulus. And so the plant really just starts to come alive, sort of saying, because I think we're very used to thinking of plants as alive, but with, an, with two modalities, alive or dead. We don't really think of them as how are they experiencing the day, how are they expressing themselves throughout the day, what are they reacting to 
relation to my mood or to the mood of those around them or to the weather. And so these are all the areas that we're taking this research or that we continue to take this research. So would you say that the plants themselves have a consciousness that you are connecting with and uh, communicating with and, and teaching? Absolutely. I mean, and plants have, um, and even research now in traditional plant biology, what's controversially called plant neurobiology, plant signaling, over the last about 10 years has starting to show that plants aren't just instinctive creatures, but they literally have intelligence and choose how they move. So in addition to the fact that they've discovered that they have a minimum of all the same five senses we do, they have additional senses that they can work with, um, but they also literally choose the paths in which they grow, they make intelligent decisions, and from our experience, the way that they react to human interaction, whether it be musical or even just presence or touching or other senses, it feels like they do have a consciousness that they're able to then work with. And so they're able to tap into the greater consciousness and they're able to then react themselves. So what is, you say it's reactionary. I mean, um, do you, or do they actually teach you things as well? What, what level of consciousness are we talking about? Absolutely. I mean, definitely plants are the oldest beings on this planet. I mean, and, and they've been around, they've been able to evolve, they're extremely adaptive. And so they have a lot to teach us. In our experience here, there um, it is a very much a reciprocal relationship. We have lots of stories and research that we've done and um, where even we have a little book where we kind of tell us some of these different types of research where we talk about the fact that the plants literally um, can interact with us and so it's not about us teaching them things. Most, most of the time it's them teaching us. Um, so it's kind of some of the things we're trying to teach them is okay can we teach them what does it mean to go right or go left if they're driving a cart or can we teach them about different harmonies but they teach us for example, um, how they interpret um, moods, how they interpret energies around them, how they interpret the environment. Um, for example, they can uh, react, not react, excuse me, they can perceive things in the environment that we are not able to perceive. But hopefully if we continue this relationship, we might be able to learn from them how they perceive this and therefore kind of take on this perception ourselves. So these are all areas that we have kind of open for research where we partner with different groups. We encourage people who are interested to come and, and work with us. We have people that are doing it on a very kind of healing perspective. So some people that I know that are doing research relating to what is the effect of plant music on the body because obviously it has um, uh, not just a soothing effect but it, it appears to also have an effect that's really healing just the same as when I walk into nature there's such an ability to heal. But we also know that plants are medicine in so many aspects. And therefore, what is it like if I ingest the plant as well as, um, so I'm taking some kind of supplement that has this, this plant base, and I also listen to the music of the plant. And how is it that the plant is able to help me? So there is definitely a reciprocal relationship here. It's not just about us trying to teach, but us trying to learn, really. Wow, it sounds like the scope of work is huge, actually. <laughs> Um, so it is, quite yeah. So um, and it sounds absolutely fascinating. And you yourself have had quite a varied and rich background um, and working career, um, from sound engineering to touring with the Cirque du Soleil. Um, so can you tell us a bit about how you came to be working with um, at Damino in Italy on the music of the plants and um, uh, and, and what aspect of the uh, project you're personally working on? So I have this really strange background, as you just mentioned. So I studied music engineering and electrical engineering in college. Um, so I'm, I was very into the idea of how does really music work on different levels. Um, specifically, I started in software development um, with the idea of very early days of internet radio, internet video. And the idea for me that was always really important was this communication aspect and this aspect of having the people experience something that they're not really able to experience. 
Um, my career in software development took me through different companies, specifically Microsoft was the last one I worked with, um, which gave me a very broad experience around what software and what um, computing power or electronics can really do. And, and then I went back into the arts. I have an arts background as well, obviously with music engineering. I did a lot of that and theater and, um, and I, I had a circus and I worked with and owned, co-owned a circus. And then I eventually started to produce these events. I produced uh, large uh, dance parties uh, with a very spiritual focus around them. So it was the idea of using, again, music for transformation, using music, lights, video, all together to create a transformational type experience and allow people to come in contact with something they probably never come in contact before. Um, and so through a series of journeys, I ended up on Cirque du Soleil, working on a tour, and then came to Europe and spent um, a few years in Europe as teaching. Um, I taught Kabbalah, sacred geometry, again, very transformational experience. When I came to Dominher several years ago, um, I specifically came here to work on social media, to work on computers and, and website designs with the idea, again, of helping people find that transformation. So kind of you see this little theme within my life, which is all about the fact that I feel like it's really important for us to show people the things that we've already been able to discover. I feel very fortunate that I've been able to have this vast experience that has shown me um, what true transformation can look like and that there are so many different avenues to it. And so when I arrived at Dominher and I saw that you know the diversity of the way that we express our spirituality, when I saw the diversity in the way that we express um, growth and change, I was like, this this is great. This is what I want to really express to the world. And um, and then I was given a Music of the Plants device, and it was put in my hands, and it was like, have you heard this? And that was it, love at first sight. You know, The idea of being able to enter into this harmony with plants, especially because I work a lot in urban environments, in the sense that I like to focus, not so much in the people that are trying to escape the city, because while um, it is easy to think that it's the country that's more sustainable, the truth of the matter is that cities are extremely sustainable. So many people living together means shared resources, if we learn how to share our resources. And what's more important in there is to also have this connection of nature. Um, I, I find it incredible when people think that they're disconnected to nature and then they walk through their city and there's huge trees and beautiful hedges and all these window boxes. And I'm like, you're never disconnected from nature. So the music of the plants was able to marry my first love, which is music and the arts, to my second love, which is electronics and everything around transformation, to connection to nature. It kind of brought everything back together. So here I focus on a few different things. I focus on communications in general, like I've said, that thread of being able to get this out into the world. And really, um, not just getting it out as in saying you should experience this, but really you should create your experience with it. The music of the plants is experienced by different people in many different ways. Some people see it as music, some people see it as a language that they're learning how to speak with plants. Other people see it as a way for um, plants to heal and so as a healing modality. Other people see it in instead as an extension of science. And so gathering up all of these different forms of communication, helping people really find their avenue to transformation, their avenue to connection um, is one main area of focus and so that's the communications part and then my own personal research where I um, have, uh, I live in a, a wooded type area connected to lots of nature and yet trying to enter into deep contact with one or two trees, um, specifically I love trees, and really understand um, what, what are their sleeping patterns like, for example, is one of my big research areas now. And if we sleep, if we have a sleeping cycle that's similar, will we dream together? Like, do plants dream? And can I learn through that dreaming process if I'm listening to the music of the plants when we're both in that REM state and that dream state? So this is kind of my, my latest area of research. Wow, that sounds fascinating. Very interesting to us. We run the Gateways of the Mind conference as well, and uh, we we study a lot of uh, different aspects of dreaming. So that's fascinating. Um, so, so do plants dream? <laughs> I'm I'm hoping to find out. I mean, in my experience, I have found that um, there is. A, I don't know if it's a dream or at least if they can enter into my dreams. But I definitely feel very when we're in the same 
the tree that I've been working with, for example, from around 2 o'clock in the morning to about 6 o'clock in the morning enters into a much, what I consider a sleep mode, based on what I hear from the sounds. And if I sleep in that time, I'm definitely much more filled with uh, answers. There's much more vivid dreaming. And so we're, we're kind of we're working together on this. Wow, sounds fascinating. You'll have to keep us posted on uh, on the developments on that. Um, and you've really yeah. helped um, take the word out to to the mainstream. Actually, you were re uh, you helped uh, take music of the plants to the Chelsea Flower Show this year. So, how did the main the the general public receive the singing plants? And um, uh, yeah, what? Do you think it could help the uh, general populace kind of change their perception of, of the plant kingdom from one of commodity and insentient objects to one of um, uh, intelligence? That, that was, I think, the most fascinating part of being at the Chelsea Flower Show. I mean, Chelsea Flower Show is absolutely beautiful. It really is beautiful, stunning to see. And yet, I was warned by several people that um, they're like, it's not the same as what you guys are doing. Um, the artist we worked with, Oliver Jennings, created a beautiful display that was very simple. It was almost like a, an art exhibit. It was an art exhibit. Four plants, and that's all there was there. And at first, the plants wouldn't play. And when I arrived, he was in a massive panic. And he was like, the plants aren't playing. And I was like, have you looked around? It's beautiful, but it's a massacre. You know, from a plant perspective, all of these plants are kind of like into these environments that are not artificial to them. Many of them think they're going to die at the end of the week because, you know, what, what do you do with all those plants at the end? And so we had to reassure the plants, get them to understand that, that we weren't going to treat them that way, that we had a mission there. And we, we ended up kind of having this bonding section all to, together. And, it, and the plants started to play, and it was really beautiful. We had this wonderful quartet throughout the week, and, um, and we were even on the one show, and we were able to play three of our plants on the one show. But the most fascinating part for me was the reaction of the audience, the people who came by. And at first, obviously, it's, I don't believe this. And then we had several plants that were being, we had one plant in particular, bromelia, that I have to admit was, thank, I'm so thankful for her because she really um, understood that her job there was to teach. At least I felt that way. And so whenever people needed to interact with one plant and really feel like this was real, we would uh, silence all the others and just put her, and she would react to the people. So people who touched her, she would react differently. People who would send her energy, she would react differently. And she really was educating people to the idea that your plants, it's not about me singing to my plants just because of the frequencies, although that is one aspect of it. But it's me communicating with the plants. And she kind of opened this entire world. I mean, all four of them really opened this world to this idea that my house plant is not just ornamental. Mm -hmm. And that I should really think about whether or not it's dying, is happy, it has water. And it's you, you could sort of see the people's minds starting to change. Like Even the most skeptical, we had one man who was quite funny because he just stood there for a long time in a positive way. But he was like, I don't believe it. And he stood there for a very long time talking to us and he experimented. And then every time he would come back, he would look at us and he was like, I'm still not sure I believe it. But you could see that his mind was starting to grasp this concept. And, and you, you have to mix it with the science. You can't, you, you have to acknowledge all the beautiful work that's being done in the world around the plant biology and signaling and see how those pieces fit together. Consciousness is hard to measure even in human consciousness, even though we all agree that humans have consciousness. Can you imagine in a plant where we can't just get a straight response from them? So um, this type of work being done at a place like Chelsea Flower Show really opens the door to more research. It opens the door to more personal experimentation. It opens the door to people looking at their gardens um, in a much more um, involved sort of way. Even my, even when I love my fruit and my vegetables and a lot of people who were like, I'm a vegetarian, now what do I eat? And I'm like, this is another reason why um, you should think about the whole cycle and, and be, being an omnivor uh, omnivorous because everything has some kind of life, some kind of consciousness, and therefore we, we need to just appreciate and interact with whatever it is that we're eating, with whatever it is that we're growing, with whatever it is that's around us, your dog, your cats, your cyclamine, your fig tree, all of them are, are connected. So 
Chelsea was wonderful for that, uh, and I really look forward to actually working with other big gardens and garden uh, shows and events in order for us to continue to spread this work out. Fantastic. And you're going to be joining us at the um, Plant Consciousness Conference in October. Um, can you give us a little bit of an overview of what you'll be sharing with us and what people who attend the conference can expect to learn? Yeah, um, the, the plan right now, and, and this is obviously the good thing about plants is that they, they sort of give you sort of answers as it goes. But what we're going to be talking about, we're going to start a little bit with the history because I think it's important for people to understand that this isn't just new research. This is actually research that's been going on for a very long time. So we want to kind of give people an overview of even what's possible. You know, we've had many different experiments, like I said, with carts and with uh, light bulbs and with doors being opened by plants and kind of open the idea of the fact that your plants can become even more, you know, we have a guard dog, but in airports they're looking into guard plants. Not kidding. So talking a little bit about what's the history of plant research and how we're moving toward um, a more integrated sort of way of working with them. And then I'm going to talk a lot about the music of the plants itself. I'm going to be bringing a few of the devices with us. So here I have a I have one that's connected to my little plant here so that you can see she's been uh, training. And we're going to talk a little bit about what we've discovered with the music of the plants, give people a concert, the ability for them to hear it themselves, and, um, and really experience this, and to understand where, where it can go, kind of explore a little bit where, what's the next frontier on consciousness of plants, of communication with plants, and of contact with nature, and specifically how we bring that into our city. Being in London, the events, it's really exciting for me because, like I said, I think it's really important for people to recognize that my house plant is not separate from the forest that I went to go visit yesterday. You know, it's all still part of nature. Fantastic. Well, I think um, you being part of the event is a real fundamental aspect um, of the conference because it will actually give people a direct experience of that uh, communication with plants and open our minds to, to the bigger possibilities of, of reconnecting back with our true nature, actually. So um, really looking forward to meeting you and to seeing your presentation. Yeah. So thank you very much for joining me today. And no, thank you. And to, to our listeners, um, if you want to join uh, Tagrilla, myself, and many other fantastic speakers um, at the Plonk Consciousness in November, uh, sorry, October, it's the 4th and 5th of October in London at Regents University. You can find out more at plantconsciousness.com. You can sign up for our newsletter. And um, we've got lots of more uh, interviews with our speakers coming up, so you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. So thank you very much, Tagrilla, and um, uh, we look forward to seeing you in October. I look forward to it as well. Thank you so much. Okay, take care. And thank you for doing this work. It's really important. Take care. Thank you. Thank you for your work as well. It's, it's fantastic. Can't wait to learn more.